Do you know how planets were made? Maybe a theory. Well, the best idea we have now is that the sun and the planets formed at the same time out of a giant gas cloud in space called a nebula. This thing collapsed under its own gravity and in the center it got really thick and that's where the sun formed. The gas collected and got very hot and got squeezed really tightly by its own gravity and eventually in the very center of it, hydrogen atoms got squeezed into helium atoms. That creates fusion like a nuclear bomb, in fact. That creates a lot of heat and turned into the sun. The disk, the, the, the gas cloud forms into a disk, and, and out in that disk, out in the edges, that's where the planets formed. And so they, they start collecting, and, and basically they got, as they got massive enough, they started drawing in more material. And so they all have a lot of rock in them. But the, uh, the inner planets were warmer because they're closer to the sun. And all the light gases like hydrogen and helium kind of blew away. But on the outer planets like Jupiter and Saturn, Uranus and Neptune, where it's much colder, those planets were able to hold on to those light gases. And so when you look at the different planets, you see different compositions depending on where they are in their distance from the sun. Close in planets have a lot of rock and metal. Farther away planets also have a lot of rock and metal, but they also have a lot of lighter stuff as well because they could hold on to them better because they were colder. And that stuff wouldn't just float away. Does Mars have polar ice caps? If it does, wouldn't it have water? Well, actually, Mars has polar ice caps a lot like the Earth. There's a polar ice cap on the North and on the South Pole. The North polar ice cap is mostly made of frozen water. It's ice. And then in the winter sometimes, it's so cold that carbon dioxide can freeze out and, and make a little thin layer, a few, uh, you know, few feet thick, on top of that water ice. On the South Pole, though, it's about half and half. Half of it is water ice and half of it is carbon dioxide ice. You may know this as dry ice. Sometimes if you get like an ice cream cake or something like that, they'll put dry ice in it to keep it cold. Or if you watch TV and you see witches making a brew and there's, there's fog coming out of it, that's a trick. You can throw dry ice in water and it does that. But on Mars where it's so cold, this stuff is frozen and so you have these two caps made of dry ice. And it turns out that there's enough water frozen in the poles of Mars, if you ignore the dry ice, that if you could melt it, you could actually cover Mars in an ocean, the entire planet, about 30 feet deep. So there actually is enough water on Mars to actually create Earth-like conditions. All we'd have to do is melt it. It's not that easy to do, but if you could, you know, we could turn Mars into a pretty nice place. How do meteoroids change into meteorites? A meteoroid is just a chunk of rock or ice or metal or something that's floating around in space. Now, if that thing falls into the Earth's gravity and falls into the atmosphere, it gets very hot as it compresses the air in front of it. If you've ever tried to use a, a, a tire pump on your bike and you pump it really hard, the, the, the bicycle pump will get hot. That's because when you compress air, it heats up. Well, when this chunk of rock, this meteoroid, is ramming through the Earth's atmosphere really, really fast. It compresses the air and makes it very hot. It gets so hot that the meteoroid starts to melt and it can actually glow like a light bulb. That's called a meteor. So when you look up in the sky and you see one of these things shooting across the sky, a shooting star or a falling star, that's called a meteor. Now, if it doesn't burn up and it goes all the way to the Earth's surface and smacks into the Earth, then it's called a meteorite. And you can find these. You can actually buy them or collect them. I actually have a few. This is a meteorite. This fell in, um, in, this, in, the, uh, in South America thousands and thousands of years ago. And they found a bunch of these. And, and um, I was able to pick one up. And you can see it kind of looks, it's kind of weird. It kind of looks like what you might think an asteroid looks like. As it falls through the Earth's atmosphere, it gets these, these scoops taken out of it. They're like, like, you, like you've pushed your thumb into clay because of the way it tumbles and falls through the Earth's atmosphere. But this used to be a meteoroid. It orbited the sun for billions of years. For a minute or two, as it fell through the Earth's atmosphere, it was a meteor. And then, when it hit the ground, it became a meteorite. How do you measure the temperature on the planets humans can't get to? Well, it's not easy. But it turns out you can do it. It's a little bit complicated. You have to use what's called a spectrograph. And what this does is it takes the light from an object and breaks it up into a rainbow, breaks it up into all the colors, kind of like when you see a rainbow after a rainstorm. And by very carefully measuring the amounts of each color, you can actually tell a lot about the object that's giving off that light. You can tell what temperature it is, 
what it's made of, you can tell if it's spinning, you can tell if it's moving towards you or away from you, all kinds of stuff. And so by carefully measuring the stuff, astronomers have been able to determine all kinds of things, like the temperatures of the planets. We know that Jupiter has got a lot of hydrogen and helium in it without uh, ever having gone there at first. We've sent probes there now, but without even actually taking a sample of that atmosphere, we've been able to learn a lot about how that works. And we've done this with stars and galaxies and all kinds of stuff without ever having to leave the surface of the Earth. It's amazing, but that's science. About how large is the asteroid belt? Well, the asteroid belt is a collection of rocks and, and metal and, and big chunks of these things, and they orbit the sun mostly between Mars and Jupiter. The asteroid belt is about 250 million kilometers across. That's about 150 miles, roughly. But it doesn't have like an inner edge and an outer edge. There's sort of a main belt that has where most of these things are. But it sort of fades off on either side. Some of these objects orbit the sun and come even closer to the sun than the Earth is. And that's why these things can actually hit the Earth and make giant craters on the Earth. And they can make movies about it and scare people. And some of them orbit much farther out. But roughly it's about 150 million miles across. What happened to Planet X? Well, a long time ago, when Uranus and Neptune were first discovered, they weren't orbiting the sun quite the way they should have, at least the way astronomers thought they should have. And so they figured there must be another planet out there, a big planet, that's gra the gravity of this planet was pulling on Uranus and Neptune, and that's why they weren't in exactly the spot that astronomers expected them to be. Well, they looked and looked and looked, and eventually, in 1930, Pluto was discovered. But a few years later, it was figured out that Pluto was way too small and dinky to have much gravity. And it certainly could not have been what was changing the orbits of Uranus and Neptune uh, the way they were observed. And it was thought there was another planet, Planet X, out there. Even Pluto was called Planet X for a while. Well, it turns out that the, um, the mass that we had thought uh, existed for Uranus and Neptune, in other words, we had measured what we thought their mass was, we were off by a little bit, just a half a percent, a little tiny bit. And we didn't know that until we actually sent a space probe past Uranus and Neptune. And the way the path, the way the orbit of the space probe moved as it went past Uranus and Neptune allowed us to get better masses for them. And when you, when you do that and you calculate the gravity of all the planets all together, you find out that Uranus and Neptune are doing exactly what they should be. And so in other words, we had the gravity of these planets calculated a little bit off. When we corrected that, got the gravity right, everything was fine. And that means there's not probably another massive planet out there, unless it's really far away and its gravity doesn't affect the orbits of the planets that much. Now, if you mean Planet X like this, this idea that there was a giant planet that orbits the sun every 3,600 years, something like that, and every now and again gets past the Earth and causes earthquakes and disasters, that doesn't exist. That's totally made up stuff. There are a bunch of people out there who are trying to say that this planet exists and they have names for it like Nibiru and all this stuff. Uh-uh. If that planet were out there, we would know it. We would be able to see it. We'd see effects from it. It would be as obvious as, you know, not the sun in the sky, but as, as Jupiter or Saturn, which you can actually just go out and see with your unaided eye. So we know there's no planet like that. There's nothing to worry about. I've got a bunch of web pages about that too. If you want to go look them up on my website, you can find them there. There's nothing to worry about, about any sort of mysterious planet X. Can the Earth blow up? Hmm. Well, not really. It's really, really hard to blow up a planet. Um, you could if you took an object the size of the moon and smashed it into the Earth, but then you'd have to figure out how to move the moon in the first place, and that's really hard. It takes a huge amount of energy to blow up a planet. Trillions and trillions and trillions of nuclear weapons could do it, but we don't have that many. There are only thousands of nuclear bombs on the Earth. Enough to do a lot of damage if we blew them all up, but nowhere near enough to blow up the Earth. So you don't have to worry about it. Movies like Star Wars and those other movies where they just zap a planet and it blows up, uh -uh. you really just can't do that. 